A huge mistake swimmers make is kicking too much. Yup, you heard that right. Kicking more can actually make you swim slower. And in this video, I wanna share with you not only how to improve your kicking technique, but I wanna dive into the details and explain the difference between the two beat, four beat, six beat, and eight beat kicks, so that way you can swim faster with less energy. So let's go ahead and get right into it and talk about how to actually swim faster. Then we're gonna apply this to the kicking technique, a little bit of physics for you guys. Then we're gonna talk about the differences between all the different beats of kick. So in swimming, there's only two ways to get faster. Number one, you can increase propulsion, and number two, you can decrease drag. Now it's really important to focus on decreasing drag because that's actually the easier way and faster way to improve your technique and your speed. So increasing your propulsion is relatively self-explanatory. What you're trying to do is you're trying to kick more water. So when we're thinking about a kick perspective, we've got this beautiful drawing here. Go ahead and drop a like if you enjoy my illustration skills. And if you notice in my beautiful swimmer drawing, I have the amplitude drawn out and that's the total distance from the top of the kick to the bottom of the kick. Now a big mistake a lot of swimmers make is they actually have too big of a kick. So you're trying to increase propulsion. So you think that by having a bigger kick and increasing your amplitude, you're going to be able to pull more water. Now that's actually true. You will pull more water. However, you're going to be increasing your drag at the same time. So they're inversely related to each other. So if you increase the amount of drag that you have, well, you're actually going to have more propulsion. But if we minimize the amount of drag that we have, then we're actually going to swim faster because water is 800 times more resistive than air. And so because water is just so thick, it's so important to minimize our kick. So now that we understand the physics of how you actually have a faster kick, simply just make it smaller. Now we need to understand how often should the kick frequency be? What is the cadence at which your feet are actually moving through the water? And there's actually four different ways that you can do this. So the first way is called a zero beat kick. Now each beat is just representative of the actual kick and we're going to treat the right foot and the left foot each as individual beats. So if you have a zero beat kick, that means you're not kicking at all. Pretty easy, right? When would you do this? Well, you do this in a pull set. So you are being very intentional with not using your legs. The challenge with a zero beat kick, if you remember our beautiful swimming illustration here, the swimmer will not have a good body position. If you stop kicking, you can actually sink your body and the body line is gonna look something like this. Now, if you remember my illustration with the amplitude, the amplitude is now going to get larger and you're gonna have more drag. So you have to be really careful with how you treat a zero beat kick because if you do have a zero beat kick and you don't have a pull buoy, your legs are just gonna sink and you're gonna train your body to swim with an improper body position and that's no good. So let's move on to the two beat kick. This is a little bit better because this is how most swimmers are gonna swim a majority of the time. So this means you have one kick for every one arm stroke. So you put your right arm in the water and then you have one kick. You put your left arm in the water and then the other foot is kicking. And this is really all about balance. So when you're doing a two beat kick, this is about balance and stability. And you're gonna do this in your warm ups, your cool downs and your longer sets. Even in competition, you look at the best swimmers in the world, like a Katie Ledecky, and she's going to have a two beat kick for most of the race. So she's swimming at world record pace, she's winning the Olympics, and she has a two beat kick. Now, if you remember in the beginning of the video, I mentioned that a huge mistake that swimmers have is kicking too much. So they're kicking, you're kicking with a six beat or eight beat kick, and you're causing all this commotion and drag. When I'm telling you the best swimmers in the world for these longer distances are using a two beat kick and they're able to swim at incredible speed with incredible efficiency. So that's the two beat kick. Now let's move on to a four beat kick. Now this is a little bit unique. A lot of people do not swim with a four beat kick. And let me explain what exactly this means. This means on average you have two kicks for every one stroke. And the way this works is actually a pause 
that happens after the breath. And the timing of the kick is really designed in the stroke rhythm so that you can have continuous motion, but it's actually gonna elevate your body to get the breath, and then you're gonna sink back down. So unlike the two beat kick or even the six beat kick, there is not a lot of stability in the four beat kick. This, if you wanna think about it, it's like a six beat kick, which we're gonna talk about next, but you're only doing that for four kicks, and then you take a break and then you start kicking again. So the reason why you might do this is if you're transitioning from the two beat kick to a six beat kick. Now actually we're gonna talk about a, a set right here where I'm gonna explain how you can transition between kicks and you'll actually see the top swimmers like a Katie Ledecky transition from the two beat kick into a six beat kick by the end of the race and the transition period is that four beat kick. But for the scope of how you wanna think about your own swimming and kicking, we really wanna focus on the two beat kick and the six beat kick. So let's talk about the six beat kick. This is where you take three kicks for every one arm stroke. This means you're swimming really fast. You're putting in a lot of intensity. And one of the challenges, one of the cons of having a six beat kick is it's energy draining. This is the most difficult and most taxing. Think about it, your legs are the biggest parts of your body. It takes a lot of blood, a lot of oxygen, and it's gonna make you tired much more quickly. So if you're thinking about swimming for a long period of time, it's really gonna be with the two beat kick. And as you get to a shorter distance, a higher intensity, you're gonna transition to that six beat kick. Now if you watch the best swimmers in the world in a shorter distance, like a 200 meter race and lower, they're going to be swimming in the six beat kick. Now there are some swimmers that actually maintain a six beat kick through a longer distance and in training. A lot of the times this is only done by higher level swimmers and there's nothing wrong with that, but you, if you're a beginner swimmer for sure, you wanna think about swimming with that two beat kick and you really only transition to that six beat kick when you're swimming at a high velocity. Now if you're training to compete and you actually want to be fast in a 50, 100, 200, even the 400, you have to train your body to swim with the six beat kick. Otherwise if you only train with a two beat kick it's going to be really difficult to sustain any kind of a distance with a six beat kick because you're going to be simply exhausted. So if you look at all three of these put together, you can start to see some of the differences between the zero beat kick, the two beat kick, the four beat kick, and the six beat kick. Now what about this eight beat kick? I've never heard of that, right? You're really only gonna see this in two categories. Number one is elite, elite swimming, and on the extreme other end, it's complete beginners. Let me start out with the beginners, and then we'll talk about the elite swimmers. So for a beginner swimmer, if you watch someone swimming and they're just getting started, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, the biggest mistake is just kicking too much. You think, okay, I have legs, I'm supposed to kick. Flutter kick, let's go. And you start to flutter kick and the arms simply can't keep up with what the legs are doing. So you're actually gonna have four kicks for every arm stroke, but the mechanics are not really gonna be very good. And the swimmer is gonna be extremely, extremely exhausted by the end of the length of the pool. So in that case, that's a no-go. Don't worry about it, stick to the two beat kick. Now what about on the elite end of this? There's only a few swimmers that I've actually seen accomplish the eight beat kick with any kind of proficiency. Now what happens is when you're trying to squeeze in four kicks for every arm stroke, it becomes very difficult to maintain any kind of a cadence with your arms because you have to do four kicks for every arm stroke. So as a percent difference, that's actually a lot different than doing three kicks for every arm stroke. One swimmer in particular, Natalie Coughlin, is someone who does an eight beat kick. And you can actually see it, and it looks sort of bizarre from underneath the water. But for most of you watching, you're probably not gonna wanna do an eight beat kick or even a four beat kick. How do you balance between a zero beat kick, a two beat kick, and a six beat kick? And for that, I wanna show you guys a workout that actually incorporates each different kicking style at different parts of the workout. And even if you're not gonna do this specific workout that you can find conveniently in the My Swim Pro app, just understanding the psychology of how you approach your kicking mechanics will help you regardless of what swimmer you are. So as I already mentioned, this is a workout called Flutter Kick Drill, which is in the My Swim Pro workout. So I have it right here. And just keep in mind, all the intervals that you see on the screen are personalized to me and they can be personalized to you. All you have to do is download the app for iPhone 
iPhone, Android, set up an account, find this workout or the workout of the day or any of the training plans, and everything gets personalized to you. So let's go into it. The warm up starts with a 300 freestyle, and that's our two beat kick. So if you notice, every single set on here is actually telling you what style of kick to use, and just being able to mentally process what that means within the workout and within the scope of where that set is within the workout will help you out significantly. After the 300 freestyle, two beat kick, that's our warm up. We're gonna go 450s kick. Now this is full on kick. You can do it in streamline with a kickboard, whatever you'd like, put some fins on for that. And then you're gonna do a 200 pull. Remember, pull is where we are allowed to not use any kick at all. So we're gonna have a zero beat kick. And when we do that, we're actually gonna use some equipment. So we got a pull buoy to keep our legs floating so we don't turn Turn into this sinking leg character and we've got the paddles to really work on that early vertical form. Next we're going to go into the main set which is two rounds through where we go a 300 freestyle with a two beat kick. Now this 200 freestyle is a build so we're going to try and get faster and faster throughout it. We're going to negative split it and then we're going to do 450s freestyle with a six beat kick. Now if you notice the effort level here which is defined by color in the MySoon Pro app, this is a best average and a descent. So we're going to go a much higher in intensity, best average is like a 200 pace. So we're really trying to get some speed going, working the six beat kick and really crank it through. That's two rounds through, and then we're gonna cool down with three 100s freestyle with a two beat kick, nice and easy. Remember, two beat kick is for warm up, cool down, and long sets, really working on stability. We don't want up and down. That's one of the challenges, actually, that you see with the six beat kick. In order to maintain that, you might see a gallop in the stroke. Now, there's nothing wrong with developing rhythm, but it's something to be aware of because that really develops mostly with the six beat kick, having that up and down. In total, this workout is 2,000 meters, and you can check it out in the My Swim Pro app. If you enjoyed this video, you're gonna love the video I made, How to Swim Faster in 90 Seconds. Check out that video, wish you the best, and happy swimming.